and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Donny van der Beek is officially a United player and at just under 40 million euros and with his age profile, he represents a fairly low risk signing given his quality and it is below his current market value. But what will he bring to the United team? In this video we take a look. When assessing van der Beek, we'll use stats at certain points and a great place you can get stats for your favourite teams and players is OneFootball. It's a brilliant free app, available absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. And a big shout out to everyone who's been able to support FMS on Patreon. If you want to support on Patreon, check out patreon.com slash footballmadesimple and you can get rewards like early access to videos, exclusive videos and more. And if you don't have the means to do that, no problem at all. A like goes a long way. Now, let's get into it. When speaking about van der Beek, we'll focus on the different positions he's played and what he offers from each of them, what he can bring to the side as a character, and finally, speculate on how United could line up now that he has joined. Since the start of his career, van der Beek has played in three positions primarily, being defensive midfield, making 26 appearances there, central midfield, making 141 appearances there, and finally, attacking midfield, making 81 appearances. In the 1920 season, most of his time was spent at central midfield, with 20 appearances, compared to 6 at defensive midfield and 3 at attacking midfield. It's important to note that he barely plays as a sole defensive midfielder though, usually in the double pivot as part of a 4-2-3-1. And when in central midfield, it's usually on the left of a midfield 3. This shows van der Beek's versatility as he brings something different to each role. The defensive midfield role is probably the position from which he is least comfortable, but given his education in the Ajax Total Football School, he is still more than capable. But still, from these deeper areas, he is more limited as he is unlikely to be the hub of the team, like traditional defensive midfielders like Rodri, Jorginho and more. Instead, in these deep regions, he keeps it fairly simple, taking few touches and making short and simple passes rather than anything line breaking from these regions, which is something that Pogba alongside him could look to do instead. The stats show that van der Beek isn't ideally suited to the role, completing by far the fewest passes per game and attempting the least long balls. However, because he's comfortable on the ball, he can still be secure against the press, not by dribbling around the man, but rather short passes to try and disposition the opposition. But perhaps from deep, his defensive output is what he can excel at, as he has good positional sense as well as pitch coverage, so he'll be able to plug the holes left by advancing teammates. And he's aggressive in confronting opposition with the ball as his 2 tackles and 0.7 interceptions per 90 aren't far off United's dedicated defensive midfielders. Central midfield however is the position he spent the most time and we've seen him thrive. This Ajax side uses a lot of rotation in midfield and van der Beek takes advantage of this expertly using his positional awareness allowing him to move into pockets of space where opponents find him harder to track. He often moves into wide regions to find more time on the ball so that he can get his head up and it also allows the winger to push higher or invert infield looking to get in on goal. But from here, his forward running comes to the fore, but we'll look more closely to that when talking about him in the attacking midfield role as there's quite a bit of overlap. However, defensively speaking, his endurance becomes a factor as he is a true box to box midfielder. So as much as he makes runs high up into the box, if the ball breaks free, he has the discipline to track back deep to make crucial interventions. Lastly, his role as an attacking midfielder. Van der Beek isn't a traditional attacking midfielder in the way that Bruno, for example, is. Although he is capable of threading balls into the forwards, as shown by his 1.8 key passes per game and 5 assists. But what makes him special is his ability to identify pockets of space where he cannot be picked up. He often pushes between the fullback and centre back, and as Tadic is a false nine, he often drops deep, and van der Beek is quick at sniffing out the space, making well timed runs into the box. But even when the ball does go wide and the opposition defender's attention is turned towards the ball, he's a master at the blindside run, popping up seemingly out of nowhere to finish. And within the Eredivisie, Ajax look to push up to press high when defending. Van der Beek is often pushed high with Tadic to begin this using his angles and cover shadow well to still cover the route into midfield. And despite being so young, van der Beek has already shown leadership abilities, captaining Ajax on a few occasions. According to reports, he's also a positive presence in the dressing room, 
something that no doubt Ollie would be delighted to hear. And van der Beek's work rate in training and matches transmits to his teammates. Now, onto the big question, where would he fit in? There are several options, the first being van der Beek in a double pivot alongside Pogba with Fernandes high. Alternatively, Pogba could act as the sole pivot with two ahead of him. The problem is that in the double pivot, both of these players can play here, but usually as the more attacking element of the pivot. So it may stunt their playing style when it comes to making forward runs. With Pogba as the single pivot, you take away the attacking edge to his game, which would be a shame. Perhaps the 4-4-2 diamond can be ideal. Van der Beek could play at the tip, so that on the occasions where Martial and Rashford can push wide, he would be comfortable to make the run into the created space. However, I think van der Beek will have to earn his spot, as there is a good chance that he will not be a guaranteed starter, at least to begin with. Perhaps he is more of a long-term prospect, with Pogba entering the final phase of his contract soon. Overall, United have gotten a decent player with the potential to develop into something far more for a decent price. However, at the moment, he may not be the signing that addresses their most pressing positions. But how would you rate him in terms of price, quality, fit for the team and overall? Drop it down below. And of course, a special thanks to my Patreons including Daniel Musser, Kendrick Lee, Konrad Kizilovic, Taya Latif, Ruben Jarecki and Accelerator. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.